I'd like to return to the idea that in expressions for the equilibrium constant K and for the reaction quotient Q, that pure liquids and solids do not appear. So let's just consider reactions that have different phases of reactants and products. Most of the examples are actually the same phase and all in solution. And so the expressions for K and Q, where all the reactants and all the products appear, is really one that would apply, for instance, to a reaction where all the species are in solution. So how about a reaction where we have C and D in solution, but let's say A is a pure solid and B is a pure liquid. And now the expressions for K and Q are simplified because the active concentrations of a pure solid or a liquid is one. So now A and B disappear and we just have expressions that have the products C and D. Now, what if A, B, C, and D are gases? Now, Kc, you can use the concentration of gases. That would be appropriate. But sometimes it's easier not to think about the concentration of a gas, but the pressure of a gas, because that's much more easier to measure. And so you can write a different kind of equilibrium expression called Kp, where P is specifically for pressure and also for QP. And instead of concentrations, now the ratio involves the partial pressures of the products and the reactants. But just like before for KC, these pressures are raised to the power of these coefficients in the balanced chemical equation. The two equilibrium constants, Kp and Kc, are related by this equation shown here, where Kp is equal to Kc times the product of R times T raised to the delta N of gas. So R is the ideal gas constant, T is temperature, and delta N of gas is just the change in the total moles of gas in the chemical reaction. So delta N can be calculated by taking the moles of gas that are products minus the moles of gas that are reactants. So we can actually derive this equation for a general chemical reaction. Uh, like the one shown here. And we can begin this derivation by first writing the expression for Kp. So here we have the partial pressures of the products raised to their coefficients on the top part of this ratio. And in the denominator, we have the partial pressure of the reactant gases also raised to their coefficients. For this derivation, we just need the ideal gas law, PV equals nRT. And if we move volume to the other side of the equation, we have a term N over V, which is simply just concentration. So for a gas A, we can define the partial pressure of A as the concentration of A times R times T. Now, because the ideal gas constant is from the ideal gas law, the exact value of R that you want to use is the one where you have pressure and volume in the units. So here we're going to use 0.0821 liters times atmosphere over mole times Kelvin. Coming back to the derivation, we can now replace all the partial pressure terms with their concentration times RT. Uh, so here we go. What I've done is replace all the partial pressures for C, D, A, and B with their concentration times RT. And these are all being raised to the power of their coefficients. So now I can collect the like terms RT 
and that leaves me the concentrations of the products on top over the concentrations of the reactants. And this first part is just the definition of Kc. And when we collect the terms for RT, you'll see that we have the powers of the product coefficients being added, and then the powers of the reactants being subtracted. And this C plus D minus A minus B is really the change in the moles of gas of this chemical reaction. And so this is how we derive that Kp is equal to Kc times the product RT raised to the delta N of gas. The value of Q can tell you something about the reaction direction if you know the specific value for K. Now remember, Q can change during the reaction, but K is always constant for a particular reaction at a specific temperature. So that's represented by this cartoon here, where Q is equal to K, and this is equilibrium because there is no net change. And so the reaction direction is essentially none because it stays put. Now, what if we have a situation where Q is less than K? Then the reaction direction will be towards products, or you can say to the right. Now, one way to think about this is that if Q is less than K, then what that means is that this ratio is smaller than this ratio. And so Q being less than K means that the product in the numerator concentration must be smaller than the equilibrium product concentration. And so for Q to become K, you want to increase the numerator, which is product concentration, while decreasing the denominator, which is the reactant concentration. So more product, less reactant, that means the reaction is moving to the right towards products. Now, you can also have situations where Q is greater than K. And in this case, you want Q to get smaller. So one way you can do that is to move the reaction towards the reactants or to the left. So again, if Q is greater than K, then that likely means the numerator, the product concentration, is larger than the concentration of product at equilibrium. So you want product concentration to go down while you want reactant concentration to go up. So more reactant and less product that means the reaction is moving towards the reactant or towards the left. This is a reaction I showed earlier where A turns into B and we start with 100% A. And so the reaction direction was towards B or the product or to the right. This is a situation where our starting point is that Q is less than K. So we want Q to continually increase until we reach equilibrium where Q and K have equal values. In this related example, we start with all B and we again reach equilibrium, but because we have more product than reactant compared to the equilibrium concentrations, this example where at r time zero, Q is larger than K, and we want Q to decrease by decreasing product and having more reactant until again we reach equilibrium and Q and K have exactly the same values. This is also another slide I showed earlier where we have a continuum of potential Q values for different reaction mixtures. And I selected that the K value for this reaction would be 3.6. And so no matter where you start, you want to end up where Q will be equal to K. So 
on the right hand side where we have a lot of reactants more than at the equilibrium state, then we have a situation where Q is less than K and we want to form more products, have less reactants, and therefore the reaction direction is to the right. On the other hand, we can start with mostly product, even all product B, and this has too much product compared to the equilibrium concentration. So Q is greater than K, and to get Q to be decreased until it reaches the value of K, we want to move the reaction towards the reactants or to the left.